Hey guys, welcome, welcome. Let's see here. Okay, awesome. Welcome to number five, session five, overcoming the spirit of fear. So let's do this because I want to make sure that I can see you guys. All right, so I think I got my comment section going. Let me know where you are, who you are, all the goodies. Um, looking forward. Let's see here. Hey, Amy. Hey, Anna Marie. Good evening. So we're going to start with prayer, but I also want to... Um, just give people a couple of minutes to let me know where are they coming from? Texas. All right. Nice. Um, and give you guys a second to share the broadcast. So we're going to do that. Um, and I'm just going to take a second just to make sure that the video is doing what it is supposed to be doing and that it's posting what it's supposed to be posting and all those good things. So, okay. Awesome. I think we're okay. All right. Great. Hey, Lisa Highland. How are you? Good to see you guys. So yeah, I'm just going to ask that you share if you can. Um, I want to make sure that everything that I posted is going okay, because sometimes I post something and it will not show up the right way. And that's okay. All right. Awesome. Here we are. I see it. Great. All right. <laughs> My husband says, I'm in the kitchen. Good. <laughs> I love it when you're in the kitchen, babe. <laughs> Praise God. All right. So this is going to be a dynamic. Um, this is going to be a dynamic broadcast. I, I just, I have been in prayer over you guys in intercession over you guys over this broadcast. Cause I know the Lord was like, we have to do the spirit of fear. We got to overcome this thing. So many people um, experience it. Um, fear is, is a liar and fear is one of the most prevalent spirits and familiar spirits that exist to the point that we actually begin to believe that it, it, it is, it is just normal, that what we're experiencing is normal, that hovering over our children is normal, that, 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 um, you know, experiencing that heart rate go up and, oh, it's just part of the family. Fear is one of those things, um, that really knows how to be subtle because a lot of people think that the spirit of fear happens to be when you're afraid of something. And so you'll have, and traditionally I'll have, um, you know, women and men tell me uh, before doing inner healing and deliverance, they'll say, well, I'm not really afraid of anything. And it's like, okay, but that's not really what it is. It's not just, ah, you know, I'm afraid of something. That's not how it works. If it was that obvious, then everybody would know that they have it and they would look for, um, you know, for deliverance. So the truth of the matter is, is that a lot of people experience it through uh, an alternative way. They'll experience it through nervousness or anxiety. They'll experience it through physical manifestations. And we're going to talk about that too. So we're going to cover the spirit of fear only in this broadcast. That's what we're covering because it's such, um, it's such a deep thing and it's such a big thing that I want you to really understand where it comes from, how it enters and how to get rid of it. And then we're going to pray together and we're going to get rid of it. Um, so that's, that's tonight. That's just, it's on this. Okay. Um, yeah, it is definitely deep. So let's start by praying. So father, we just ask that you would seal this broadcast and your blood and authority. Lord God, I just call forth those who need to hear this. There are those that need to be called forth to this broadcast because they need to hear it. They cannot avoid it any longer. They cannot uh, try to believe that they're not suffering from it. The, the truth is that, th that they hear this and that they would come and watch to be set free. Because tonight we have come to set the captives free. We have laid the foundation, Father, the way you asked with the first few sessions. 
And now, Lord God, we are doing what you asked in casting out the spirit of fear. So I just call forth those who need to hear from the north, the south, the east, and the west. And I ask that your angels would deliver the word as a seed to be sown into their soil. Give them eyes to see and ears to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying to them. Give them discernment to be able to know the root of something that they struggle with and where it stems from. I ask you, Lord, that the seven spirits of God, the Holy Spirit, would rest on us. Wisdom, might, revelation, Lord God, fear and trembling of the Lord, which is a different fear. Lord God, I just pray that you would open the eyes of the heart of those to receive the healing. I bless them, Lord God, in every room in their temple. I ask that you would prepare the rooms in their temple for deliverance. Hmm. Prepare the rooms. Prepare the rooms, oh God, in Jesus' name. Hmm. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the spirit of fear, let's, let's jump on in. I'm going to tell you a little bit of uh, my testimony because I think it's only fair if I'm asking you um, to dig deep, right? Then I have to uh, share with you some of the things that how the spirit of fear uh, entered into my life because I, it's something that I had to overcome in inner healing and deliverance. So I, when I'm speaking to you, these things, um, this isn't me speaking to you about something I have no experience with. This is me saying, Hey, listen, you know, transparency, I had to go through inner healing and deliverance. So I'm a mom and I am a mom of twins and Christian is here on earth. And my daughter Eve is in heaven. And many of you actually, um, are familiar, a little bit familiar with the testimony, but for those that aren't, um, my daughter Eve passed away a day after her birth of trisomy 13. So she had a, um, a condition that had a 0% chance of existing. Um, there's 0% chance that she should have um, had this diagnosis. So we ended up struggling um, with female and male infertility. And so we, the Lord opened a door for in vitro and that's exactly what we did. We have a beautiful story of, of the insurance denying, 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 saying we don't um, do that. We don't pay for in vitro. And uh, the Lord said, keep calling. And then there was a day where the Lord said, call. And I, I was heartbroken. I was afraid that they would tell me no. I was so sad about being rejected because I wanted to have children and Chris wanted, you know, to have children. And we were, um, you know, waiting patiently um, for the Lord to come through. And, and he opened up this door. And, and the very day that I called, um, they said, yes, uh, you'll never believe this. We just received a notice of coming across our desk. They knew me by name. And they said, um, we now fully cover it. And a clinic just opened right near you where you live. And so we were so excited. And so we went through all of the uh, painful uh, testing. I went through all of the painful testing and things like that. And the Lord told me uh, years before that I was going to have twins uh, and to name the boy Christian and named the girl Eve. And so I did. Um, and I was waiting and waiting and waiting for when this stuff was going to happen. Well, it did. Um, and then year, or I should say month four, um, is when Eve was diagnosed with a condition that they said was not compatible with life. And immediately I became afraid because to have your first, to go through everything that we had gone through only to have that sort of um, report, it seemed impossible. They actually said there was no possible way that she could have had this condition. And I'm going to tell you the truth. One of the main reasons why I'm so passionate about inner healing and deliverance is because I didn't know that it existed when I was pregnant with the twins. And I remember having an experience, a demonic attack when I became pregnant and I, something entered into our room and there was something that dug its fingers, I felt claws dig into where Eve was on the side that I knew she was, I knew it. And literally 
pull something out. And I said to my husband, Chris, Chris, something was stolen. Eve was taken from us. Something is happening. I can feel it. Something's wrong with our daughter. The enemy came for her and something took her. And he said it was just a bad dream. You know, at the time we didn't know, but I just knew there was something. And the next day we had a doctor's appointment for the ultrasound. And they said, we don't know what happened, but literally there's a condition it was overnight, pretty much trisomy 13. They said all the other ultrasounds were fine. Everything, th there was a 0% chance. We did all the testing. Everything was normal. This makes no sense. We can't even explain it medically, but it could be explained spiritually. Later on to find out that um, in through inner healing and deliverance, that the entry point where that thing entered in was because of witchcraft in the family line, even though we had never engaged in it. We were believers full on, uh, born again. We had no idea that something generational had entered. We had no idea that the female of the family line, the next heir, which was Eve, was promised um, through, through witchcraft generationally before it, it sounds when you hear it like what, but I knew because I had that experience and I wondered what, how could that happen? Because we had never learned about inner healing or deliverance in that sense. We figured we're bought and blood Christians. So we didn't need any of that. Um, you know, we repented and all that. We didn't understand what it was. It wasn't preached. It wasn't taught. It wasn't like, we just didn't know. And the Bible says my, my people perish for their lack of knowledge. So when we found out that she had this condition, we prayed, we believed for a miracle. We set up her little room and we had little ladybugs and she had all of her little girl things in her room and Christian had his room set up. And what ended up happening was she was healed in heaven. I ended up hemorrhaging near death, floated up, saw God. <laughs> heard the audible voice of the Lord to tell me to wake up and fight. Hemorrhaging, not the experience, Eve with a hole in her brain, um, trying to give birth. And I thought this whole motherhood thing was stolen. I remember feeling that way. This was taken from me. I remember feeling like just completely just ripped emotionally, physically, like how could this happen, Lord? And so now as my son is, is struggling to breathe as I'm dying and as they're rushing Eve off into some um, facility that I can't go to because I'm dying, then we, we, we had to deal with that. So now the next day I'm on a blood transfusion and Christian had to be uh, am, am, via ambulance sent to Westchester Medical because he swallowed blood and we had to deal with the fact that I'm now on, you know, uh, blood transfusion. I'm sick. I can't be with my babies that I just gave birth to. And they're telling me that Eve is going to die. And I'm still professing in faith that God would, even if she died, God would raise her from the dead, that I just had that ultimate faith. Like, no, nope, it's been, it, she's healed. I did never expected that she would be healed by dying, that that would be how it was decided. So needless to say, when we got the message that she passed and we couldn't even be there, like Chris was driving back and forth to Westchester Medical and to Middletown where I lived at the time. And we were back and forth, just he was driving and just trying to be there for his whole family in every way that he could. And Eve passed away. And we knew like, okay, God can perform a miracle, but we knew that this was how he decided to do it. And even though there's a bunch more to the story about how God performed a miracle at the time and, and, and Eve's positioning, the way she was positioned in the womb, like during the, the, the birthing, she covered his mouth, thus saving him from swallowing blood and dying and choking so it's impossible for trisomy 13 babies with that condition to move. Many of them don't even make it in utero. And yet here Eve was, the Lord was using her as a miracle and her name means bringer of life. So she saved her brother's life. So there's the, the, the lining there. 
But the truth of the matter is the spirit of fear entered in. It entered in with the diagnosis. It entered in when she died because I thought, wow, I believed and the Lord still allowed it to happen. I had faith over fear and she's still not here. So I just, all of a sudden, I felt like, wow, Lord, you can't protect my children. That's, that's where it entered. There's a root of fear. There's a root. There's, there's a trauma that fear attaches itself to. And it presents a lie. And the biggest thing that we do is believe the lie. Fear attaches itself specifically to trauma and abuse and things that occur. And what happens is you begin to believe the lie that, okay, I lost Eve and a good God allowed me to lose my daughter. So what does this mean now? I became so hyper vigilant about protecting Christian that I couldn't really enjoy motherhood. Because I used to have these nightmares about Eve when I first came home from the hospital, freshly diagnosed um, with a bunch of um, illnesses and recovering. I came home with a newborn baby, a body that was completely um, massacred because of all of the physical trauma of the emergency C-section and blood transfusions. And then I had to plan a funeral on top of it. So new mother, my own body to try to care for and help recover, and then a child to bury all at the same time. And Chris had to go back to work. <laughs> and I'm like, I felt abandoned. So fear comes through that trauma. Yeah. At least honestly, when I first um, understood that everything started to make sense. I became so hypervigilant that I began to picture things happening to Christian. And I began to like walk, I would walk on a sidewalk with him or if I went food shopping with him. And this was at the time where he, I knew there was something going on with him. And this was before his official diagnosis of autism, which the Lord, by the way, healed him from. And he had this diagnosis and I knew in my spirit as a former educator, I was able to figure it out and he would run away. Like he just would run. And I'm sitting there trying to, you know, now he's one, two years old. He eh, didn't like the car seat. It, it, it was like a, it, it was another thing to deal with. So I'm thinking now we have this diagnosis, um, you know, and, and now we have, I'm still trying to grieve. I'm, I'm trying to deal with my son who has colic, who's uh, refluxed, rash, breaking out in rashes, just not, you know, completely healthy at first um, because of everything that had gone on. And what the lie that I believed was I'm, I'm it. I'm this glue that is holding the family together. And I have to get this right because when I trusted God, look what happened. I ended up with an autoimmune disease. I ended up with a child who died and now a child who is seemingly has special needs. What do I do now? I remember thinking now it's my responsibility as the mom to make everything right. I took on a burden that shouldn't have been mine. It wasn't mine to carry. I said, well, Lord, we tried it your way and look what happened. But you see, I wasn't cognizant or aware that I was thinking those things. So in the meantime, I'm still worshiping and praying and, and reading my Bible and doing all the things, but I'm not, I'm not um, admitting that I'm hurting. I'm not, I don't have the time to grieve. Um, hey, Jules, hey, Jess. And I remember thinking, what now? Like, what does this mean now for me? And so I remember going up to my bedroom and I was folding laundry. I was on autopilot, guys. Like I was on autopilot. I was, 
I was just trying to survive. I had like rings under my eyes. I was drastically losing weight, not knowing that it was Addison's disease from the um, adrenal glands during the pregnancy, during the emergency C-section, just burning out. Not to mention that I actually had, um, you know, at that time, pneumonia and kidney failure. Like I, I had kidney infection and pneumonia while I had an emergency C-section. So I could just, just to let you know where I was at. So my adrenals just were like, were, they were done. Um, and in that moment, they had burnt, they had just burnt. The doctor was like, they're, they're, you know, you're, cor- you're not producing any cortisol anymore. Like it, it, it's just, it's gone. And so I remember folding laundry on autopilot. I'd lost all this weight, not in a good way. Um, I just, I couldn't sleep. I had the sweats because I didn't realize I needed a a cortisol replacement. I needed prednisone, um, to take. And I didn't know that I almost died a year when Christian was a year old because they misdiagnosed Addison's disease, which is deadly. And so I remember just feeling like, there I am folding, folding. And God said, how do you feel? And I said, I'm fine. You know, little tired Lord, but you know, and he's like, no, 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 no. How do you feel Nicole? And I said, I told you how I feel. I'm fine. And he's like, how do you feel about me? I said, Lord, you know that I love you. He's like, no, how do you feel about me? I said, I I, I love you. I told you, Lord, I love you. And he's like, aren't you mad at me? Are you mad at me? And I was like, no, I could never be mad at you, Lord. You know, we say these like canned answers, right? And he said, how do you feel? And I went, you want to know how I feel? (laughs) Because this is our relationship with the Lord. At least this is my relationship with the Lord. Like, you know, I tried the like, you know, but I, I just, I'm honest. It's a real relationship. You know, I'm David with the Lord. I'm like, you know, now I am. Then I was a little bit more reserved in my emotions. And I, I almost didn't know how to recognize them. And so I said, I'm PO'd at you. I said, I'm mad at you. I said, look what you did. I was like, you, you didn't do what I want, needed you to do. And, and, I, and you, you were supposed to heal Eve and you were supposed to do this. And, and now I, you know, my, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to survive my own self physically while raising a kid. And, I'm try, and this is what my life is, Lord. And he said, and now we can begin the grieving process. And I thought, begin, I thought that's what I was doing, but I wasn't doing it. What was happening was the spirit of fear had manifested this unprocessed trauma, the unprocessed grief created a hypervigilance that made me feel that I had to control the environment around me. So that meant that I had to take care of myself. I had to keep everything a certain way around the house. And I had to protect my child. I had to protect my child because who was going to do it? I said to the Lord, you didn't do it, Lord. And he said, is it that I didn't do it? Did I not heal Eve by transitioning her to heaven? Or is it that I didn't do what you wanted me to do? Is it that I didn't meet the expectation that the healing would be on earth? Is it that I didn't meet the expectation of what motherhood should be? That that you have this vision and dream of carrying a baby, two babies and la la la, you know, and singing on a mountaintop. And, and, you know, you you, you hear the stories of all these women who's like, oh, it's such a beautiful thing. Yeah, you get cramps and all that. You know, you laugh about all the things that are wrong. But right? But like you, 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 you just imagine it different. You think everybody gets pregnant. Everybody has a baby and then boom, infertility. Well, everybody has, you know, it's okay. We went through in vitro. Okay. Maybe we had to go through that, but, but well, at least we'll have two healthy babies (sighs) wrong again, wrong again. Right? So we have this expectation and where fear enters is when we have a trauma of an expectation of something that's supposed to be met and it's not. It can come through a multitude of ways. If you have a parent that should have loved you a certain way, but they didn't. Maybe you were more sensitive in nature and you had 
a, a, a heart, and this is not a, a condemnation, maybe you had a more sensitive heart and you needed a little bit more love and maybe your parents were a little bit more funny or a little bit more, but they kind of like treated your feelings lightly, maybe made a joke of some things. And that fear of not having that need met made you have to make everything a joke because what if it's not funny? Then it hurts. So sometimes there's expectations that we have of our parents, expectations that we have our, of, of relationships and spouses. And we get disappointed when God doesn't do something in the way that we want him to. And then trauma happens, right? Hey, Jess, that's right. It, these are light bulb moments for me too. I, I had to find out the, the hard way and I don't want you to find out the hard way. I, I'm, I'm trying to take what God gave me and he says his yoke is light. I exchanged the burden for education. I exchanged the burden that I was carrying that was not meant for me to carry for revelation. I said, Lord, take it, use it, do what you must, but you're so much better. Lord God, you're still good. Even if you didn't do what I wanted you to do, you're still good. I never realized that through, again, generational line, there was a curse on the family that ended up taking Eve. Ever since I learned that that could happen, I became passionate about inner healing and deliverance. And I said, listen, this may have been allowed. It may have been allowed that Eve had trisomy 13. And there are babies that suffer for years with it. They live on oxygen tanks and they have no brain and they can't survive. It's awful. It's a way of life that's painful. And I asked the Lord, don't let her suffer. And he honored that request, but I couldn't see that. I couldn't see that. All I saw was that he didn't save my baby. That's what I saw. And then when I saw Christians start to show and exhibit some signs, of autism and sensory processing disorder. I remember being on the floor and I had developed fibromyalgia at the time. And I remember being on the floor while my son was banging his head on the wall and banging his head against me and kicking and screaming and flipping out um, because he couldn't express his feelings. And I remember thinking, I, I'm done, Lord. I can't do this. I have to be the better mother. I have to do it better. So I read everything I could. I did everything I could. I, I tried to become something like a God, like, like as if I could save my son, as if I could save something that can't be saved. And what the Lord did is he began to say, Nicole, you are being hyper vigilant. You're imagining things that are going to happen. If your son runs away, he gets hit by a car. God forbid something happens. I kept thinking I have to be aware at all times because something might happen to him. I have to protect my family. I have to do that. And I remember that feeling. And the Lord said, what you're dealing with is fear. You are parenting out of fear. You are creating an environment that's safe because you're afraid. It, there's a difference between being a good mom and then being a mom who sets up the children as an idol because you're so afraid of losing the child that you just try to do everything you can to protect them. And there's a fine line between paranoid and protection. And I was on par like paranoia. I was I would wake up having dreams of something happening to my son. There was trauma attached to the death of Eve and that fear, the trauma, the fear attached itself to the trauma. And I began to respond out of fear, not faith. I began to respond out of trauma responding rather than responding from, you know, who God was and who God is and, and who I am in him. And so that's an example of how it could happen. I had to give up my thought of how it should be 
and how my son should be and how our family could have been if there was four of us rather than three of us. And slowly but surely, I began to cast fear out of my life. I began to cast fear out of my son because he had a traumatic birth. As I began to cast fear out of him, changing his diet, changing my diet, casting fear out of me, he now has no IEP at all. He has no intervention, nothing. People wouldn't even know. There's just very, there's just a slight residue, but he is, is completely and totally regulated in every way. He, this is a kid who couldn't stand the dryer in a bathroom and would go hysterically crying. And now here he is going on rides. <laughs> this is a kid who was afraid of everything. And now he's so bold and he anoints people with oil and prays over it. Like this is, and, and, and can I tell you physically, fibromyalgia gone. I had developed a blood disorder. They said that my blood disorder, they said that it, my blood was so bad that I was producing no white blood cells to the point where they called it lymphocytopenia. That's actually where your body attacks itself. You see, this is what fear does. I'm going to, we're, we're, we're going deep guys. So, so get some scuba gear because, because this is, this is the truth here. This is not like, you know, a soft message. Um, so praise God that you guys are enjoying it. I want you to hear it because I want you to recognize yourself in it or, and be able to recognize it in other people, because if you're going to deliver yourself or God's going to deliver you through you and me and other people and that you're going to then help others you have to understand the root of a, of a system a root thing that's what has to be cut off not the fruit the root so lymphocytopenia i was on antibiotics every single day just to live okay so now there's addison's disease fibromyalgia irritable bowel syndrome ibs okay ibs uh c lymphocytopenia. They said, Nicole, you're like a cancer patient. I had alopecia. My hair was falling out. I had so much water retention that I couldn't even fit into some of my clothing that I used to fit in. I began to, to not be able to actually leave the house because I was in such pain that I would just scream just sitting there. I'd be like, ah, you know, I'd have to try to rest when Christian was napping if he napped. And that was my life, housebound. I went from a size, you know, whatever, exercising every day, healthy, to just completely diagnosed with about, I'd say, eight diseases. And I was on about 15 to 20 prescription medications just to live. Sleep medication, IBS medication, diverticulitis fibromyalgia, lymphocytopedia, Addison's disease, bursitis in my knees, burst carpal tunnel syndrome. I can probably, I'm, I know I'm forgetting some, that's how many. They said, you can't go any place where people have a cold or where it's crowded, isolated. That's what fear does, right? So fear manifests itself as an autoimmune condition. I said to the doctor, give me one year and I will be off of this medication. And he said, there is no way because lymphocytopenia, red blood cells replicate, but white blood cells, when you have this condition, Nicole, it doesn't heal. I said, I'm going to trust my God. I went through inner healing and deliverance. I changed my diet. I began to cast off the yoke that I was carrying, the burden that I was carrying of trying to be everything to everybody, trying to be a wonderful mother, trying to be the best wife, trying to cook every night, and it, like just trying to control myself and everything around me to make it perfect. It was a result of trauma. Through inner healing and deliverance, through self, through going to somebody for it, then through self-processing of it with God and the Holy Spirit on my knees, guttural cries would come out of me wailing like only a woman who understands and a man who understands loss but especially a mother could cry like that 
like when you you're on your knees and you're you can't even speak that's the kind of deliverance i'm talking about like just oh you know let it just lord and just holy spirit showing up in that room while my son was napping and i i knew that i was in agony but i had to mom i had to be a mom and my husband's working two jobs and and all of our medical bills and the diseases and being sick and missing out on holidays because i can't be around a cousin who has a cold because then i'll get pneumonia and die all of it i was hospitalized over and over and over again. And I began to develop this attitude that said, enemy, if you're going to put me in a hospital, I'm going to deliver other people. You think you took my daughter? You didn't take my daughter. You think you took something? You stole something? God may have allowed it, but now I'm taking back the sons and daughters. I'm taking it back from the territory of the enemy and I'm bringing it back to the kingdom of heaven. I will deliver people. And I said on my knees, Lord, this suffering, turn it, this ashes, make it beauty because I want to dedicate my life to making sure that nobody goes in ignorance again, that nobody goes through what I went through because I didn't realize that there was this generational thing that was that was in my line, family line and I didn't even know it. And I felt like, how could this be? And now my heart is to educate people and deliver people so you don't have to go through what I went through. So you understand the importance of this. God's used it. I don't have lymphocytopenia anymore. I went to the doctor a year later and I said, test my blood. He said, Nicole, come on. I told you, test it. You will believe, I said, and see that my God is good. And he said, e even after everything, because that's what they would say after everything you've been through. Yeah, yeah, he's good. Test me. They tested me. He walked in, his face was red. He said, I, I don't. I don't know what to say, Nicole, but you, you, you're, you're, and I said, I, I, what? <laughs> you don't, I'm sorry, what? You don't have lymphocytopenia. That's right. I don't have lymphocytopenia. I told you I didn't. Guess what? God healed it. Can you admit it? And he's like, I said, listen, you have no scientific explanation of how this could be healed. Do you? And he's like, no, I don't. I said, so then logically, you have to conceive that there's a possibility that it was God, something out of your wheelhouse. Can you do that? And he's like, I can concede and conceive of that fact. <laughs> this was so hard for him to say, but God, slowly but surely off of IBS medication, off of all medication, except for two. And the two prescription medications that I'm on is the last is for Addison's disease and for the joint pain for Addison's, which is actually on its way out. I had from Addison's disease, because fear affects your adrenal glands. See, pay attention to how this works, right? I had a tumor, pituitary tumor on my brain. Last year, they took an x-ray to see if it grew. Not only did it not grow, it's gone. You see how the Lord will heal you of diseases and sicknesses as a result of trauma, it, it's, I'm not saying it's overnight for me. Maybe it'll be overnight for you. It was not overnight for me. It was incremental. And I'm believing that the full thing is going to be gone. And I believe and know that I'm not going to have to take prednisone every day. I know there's going to be a day when that last bit is completely restored. But I can't tell you how happy I am that I went from 15 diseases and 20 medications down to just one thing. And guess what? No knee surgery. The bursitis was gone. Carpal tunnel, gone. All of it, gone. God restores. So tonight, we're going to be praying out some things. We're going to be talking about how fear enters and I want you, we're going to be praying deliverance together because if God could do it for me, that means that whatever you overcome, you gain authority over. And guess what? I'm sharing it with you because that's my heart. 
I don't want another person to have to wait all these years to say, why is this happening? Oh, it delivered? I didn't know that. Diabetes, that's connected. That's connected to fear. Irritable bowel syndrome, fear. Adrenal and endocrine disorders, which is also diabetic and Addison's disease, fear. It's, it's connected. Now, I want to be clear. This isn't to blame the person who's going through. I didn't do anything wrong, okay? I didn't sin and that's why I eat past. That's not what I'm talking about because I know there's some ministers that have wounded, including me. People have wounded by, by saying, oh, you, you have a mental disorder. It's a, you know, you, there's something you did, you sinned, you did something wrong. No, we're not trying to be Job's friends. There are literal chemical things. Sometimes you may have uh, something going on medically or chemically, and that's different. And I get that God could heal it, but we don't condemn a person and blame the victim, right? In this case, right? Had I done anything wrong? No. Had I invited anything in? No. But generationally, fear can be passed down. Fear was in the family line. It was. I can tell you, I've seen it. Italian family worried about things. And I, and I never was like that. I was always calm, peaceful until trauma. And that led me to believe that we've experienced. So you either have from sometimes the womb, fear can enter because of generational stuff and, and it's dormant. It's a spirit that lies dormant until something happens. And then boom, there's trauma. Sometimes it happens later in life attached to trauma. Sometimes childhood, there's something that happened, right? So God, God wants his people to not perish for lack of knowledge. So that's why it's important that I tell you the testimony to build your faith. So you know, so you know that this is not something that, um, this is not a condemnation, that this is something to say you could be healed. This is supposed to encourage you right? Now, listen, our body was designed with adrenal glands. So this doesn't mean that when you have that heart palpitation or when something happens or like, you know, car almost hits you, your heart rate goes up. That's not me saying, oh, that's a spirit of fear. No, God gave you adrenal glands and a fight or flight and a chemical cortisol to be produced so when there's something that happens or potential trauma, your body can actually handle it. So there's natural fear, which prevents us from being silly, like walking in traffic. You know, fearless isn't having zero emotions. That's not living a fearless life. That's foolish. People who are adrenaline junkies, you know, they're, they're trying to prove something sometimes. So it doesn't mean like we have to be like them, like all of a sudden you're going to go zip lining and, and you're like, you know, that's not overcoming the spirit of fear. A lot of times overcoming the spirit of fear has to do with understanding that the fight or flight reflex that we have is not meant to exist in small decisions. So let's put it this way. You're, you're doing something. Let's say you're driving to work or your daughter called you or your son called you and they're worried about something and they're sharing something bad happened or something happened and you're concerned about them. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh my goodness, I'm starting to you know, I, I'm, I'm getting concerned and your heart starts and you're imagining all these things happening, you know, because your kid is out, borrowed your car and now you're imagining, oh, they're home late. You're starting to picture a car accident. You're starting to worry, think what something must have happened to them. They're not texting me. They're not getting back to me. And you're starting to panic. That's fear because you're projecting something that did not exist and you're reacting. Your body is responding as if it happened. That's the spirit of fear. That's when the mind begins to go. That's when the mind begins to go choo, 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 and come up with all these scenarios, right? Praise God, Anna Marie. Yeah, we're going to be dealing with that in our prayer. Yes. And that's the other thing. A lot of times those things can't be pinpointed, the health issues that you get, but it comes from the mind. It comes from these scenarios. So look at this. It says that God created in Genesis, God created, right? The heavens and the earth. He formed something. The Hebrew word for that is yara, right? Yara. 
So that's to form something out of nothing. Well, if God, and if we're called to co-create something out of nothing and call forth things that aren't as though they are, that's the Bible. We pray like that. Well, guess what the opposite is? Fear calls forth a situation that's not as though it is. So it projects an idea. It projects something that you're worried about and it creates it as if it is real. You respond as if it is real right? You respond as if it's really happening. Therefore, you're projecting it. Your body is undergoing the stress of that imagination, that vain imagination that you created. Because if you could co-create with God, you could co-create with the devil. You can create chaos. You could create confusion because you're thinking of all these things and your mind is going. If you can't sleep, and you're thinking, oh gosh, what is my kid doing? Yeah, what's going on? Fear, worry. That's what that is. And, and, and you're projecting your yara. You're creating these scenarios. You're projecting them out into the atmosphere. The enemy knows it. And that's an open invitation for the spirit of fear to attach itself to the fake trauma. So there's real trauma, right? There's real trauma. So I had real trauma that existed, the death of a child, the diagnosis of a, of a healthy kid, and then my own illness, right? So now that's all trauma. But that was that trauma. But then I began to create further trauma with my mind. Those are called vain imaginations. I began to yara co-create with the wrong thing. Instead of co-creating with God's spirit, I was co-creating with a fear spirit and it was allowed in and it was able to wreak havoc. Now there's different types of fear. Okay. Because there's the fear that I'm talking about, like with the creating horrible scenarios, like Anna is saying, like, like you guys are mentioning under here. Hey, Teresa, good to see you girl. And so those are called the vain imaginations, but there's other types of fear too. So I'm going to start going into people that are like, oh, that, that doesn't like, that doesn't happen to me. I don't have that kind of fear. Well, the spirit of fear manifests as the fear of humiliation, right? So there's the fear of humiliation. Maybe you don't speak out because you're afraid of being wrong or appearing stupid, right? That's also fear. Okay. Fear of being called on in public. Maybe when you were little, you were afraid to raise your hand because maybe something happened that, that if you were a parent or a teacher belittled you or embarrassed you, that's trauma when you're little. Let's not negate those things, okay? It doesn't always have to be death of a child. I had experienced that and I had all the diseases to prove it. That's, that's that. But trauma exists in a multitude of ways. And it doesn't always have to be death or loss. Sometimes it's just loss of your dignity. Sometimes it's loss of your dignity. Like, like if somebody, a parent would belittle you or verbally abuse you or make you feel like you weren't good enough. Maybe you, you, you have a destiny, something that God called you to do, a, a voice and fear stems from the chest. And it also stems from the throat and tries to steal your voice. Asthma is an example of the spirit of fear. It tries to choke the life out of you. It's also a python, okay? And so maybe you've been slandered because that's witchcraft, right? Is manipulation control when somebody tries to do that, right? And it creates fear, okay? Yes, even dreams, like to the point where you've lost time. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And, tr and, and that's trauma to the point where you could feel like you have lost time. That's right. And that happens with fractured. Like if there's a part of you that feels fractured, there's something that's off to the side where you, you just begin to feel like, like you almost are in a catatonic state. That's also fear. So we have asthma too, as part of that, right? We have losing time as part of that, going in a catatonic state, mind being fractured. Ah, yes. And don't when I should. Yes. That's another thing. Uh, apnea could be definitely also one of them right? You have fear of inferiority, right? There's fear of being made a spectacle of, fear of being the center of attention. Do you know that's fear? That's not humility. And so when people say, um, I don't like to be the center of attention, 
right? That's 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 because of fear. When I was little, I did I was petrified of I could speak to anybody, but I was petrified of the microphone. Petrified of the microphone. Petrified of speaking in front, you know, singing in front of a crowd. I'd never liked anyone to look at me. So I just figured, well, this humility works well for me because then, you know, humility is, is not seeing me as much, right? Wrong. That's the lie. I basically thought that it was my personality type. It's not. It was fear. Fear because I was afraid of being wrong because I was afraid of getting something wrong. Perfectionism is connected to a spirit of fear. Perfectionism because you're afraid of getting it wrong. Why? What would happen if you get it wrong? Everybody will laugh at me. I, I'll, I'll be embarrassed. Fear. At the root of fear is shame. See the connections? Fear of failure, fear of disappointment. Maybe you had a parent who was never satisfied, no matter what you did, right? You could never get it right. It had to be perfect. So now you fear trying because then you fear failing. That's also a spirit of fear. Yes, Tara, it does steal the voice right? It steals the voice through, through trying to shut your voice up. When you're supposed to speak, it makes you quiet. Mocking spirit. If you've endured mocking spirit from a spouse saying, hey, this, that, and, and saying things to you and hurting you and, and, and speaking ill of you, you will begin to believe the lie that's spoken. That slander and gossip is a form of witchcraft and those threats. And it's embarrassing to you. And you just feel like you're the butt of every joke. To the point where maybe when you enter a crowd, you just don't want to be seen at all because you're afraid of what they might think, what they might say. That's fear of man. The Bible says that's a snare. Fear of being accused. There's also fear of dying, fear of death. That's a big one. And sometimes even fearing of dying of embarrassment. Hey, LJ. So fear of loss of respect, fear of the loss of reputation the fear of public speaking. Do you know that many people that are afraid to speak in public have call, public calls? Nobody would ever believe it. I actually was a teacher. I was actually a teacher for a decade. No problems teaching high school kids. Get me in front of adults. My lip, upper lip used to get so dry that it would stick all I, I was like this. Oh, my lip up. That's how dry I'd get. I get so nervous. Why? I don't know. I, I, I was afraid, afraid that I wouldn't do it right. Afraid, afraid, afraid. And then the Lord broke it in me. He broke it. And he's like, guess what? You got to come out of the cave sometime. And I did. And I did it kicking and screaming, but I did it. And it's gone. It's gone. There's no fear. I mean, look, come on. I'm being completely honest with you without fear of judgment and a public forum that gets shared. Right? Yes, those are the mother wounds, Amy, right? That's it. Mm -hmm. and, and there's those there's those vows, even in those word curses saying that you're going to need this before I need that. That's also part of it. We're going to be breaking that too in our prayer. Okay, so all that is related to fear. I want you to understand it's not always heart pounding reactions. Sometimes it's hiding, right? Sometimes it's hiding. And that's a big one right? So we have to understand that we're his temple, right? In the temple that God created, there are rooms, right? Where the Bible says we're the temple, first Corinthians 6, 19. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy spirit within you, whom you have from God? You're not your own. See that that's what I, when I started to say that over and over again, you're not your own. You're not your own. I realized I didn't belong to my parents. I didn't belong to the tragedy. I didn't belong. My story didn't define me. They, they, I had scars that told a story, but it didn't define who I was. I wasn't a victim. Fear makes you feel like a victim, right? Yes. See, we cannot hide. That's right. We can't hide. Mm. Yes. Urinary. That's another one. Urinary infection. That's another thing. When you get afraid, sometimes you know why, because you get, and I actually used to have that Jules. I had irritable bladder syndrome on top of that. And, and it's healed. I was on medication. I was on Detrol just to stop the spasms because guess what fear does? It makes you feel like you're going to lose your bowels. Like you're going to lose your, 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 your urine. Like you're going to, you could pee your pants in fear. Like it's that it's not, 
it's the truth. It's a very real issue. Um, and, and it's not, it's not something to be ashamed of. We have, that's why we're doing it here. We're doing it. Like, we're not ashamed of this. Like God overcame this, right? God went to the cross and overcame it. And what does second Corinthians six sixteen say? What agreement has the temple of God with idols for we are the temple of the living God. As God said, I will make my dwelling among them and walk among them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. When I made an agreement with the spirit of fear, I set up my children as an idol. I lived for my, for my son. Eve was like, my, my, my banner was a grieving mom. That's who I was. And now a special needs mom. And now, you know, that was my thing, a mom with a disease, okay? All of that came from the spirit of fear. I began to identify with the disease, with the thing. I began to identify that. So all of a sudden, my children, my son became like everything. I lived for him. I did everything to the point of where there was no self-care, nothing. It, I was so, my whole job was protecting him. Once the Lord healed fear, I was able to let go. And I did that just at the right time when he was two and three years old, but it took time and incremental. I didn't even want the kid to ride his bike. Okay. So this is God. Like, this is how God says, don't create an idol out of your trauma. Don't create an idol and, and try to control something or fill the void by being the best mom or by doing all the things that's fear. It's hyper vigilance. It's it's it looks like responsibility, but it's not. It looks good, but it's not because the root of it is trying to control the environment so you can create safety because you know what it feels like to not be safe. And that's that feeling. Okay. So we know that the Bible says in 2 Timothy 1, 7, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. So the Lord gave me this word for you, ladies and gentlemen tonight, for ladies and gentlemen who are watching now and later. He said to me, Nicole, look at the word, what it means. The word spirit here, the spirit of fear actually comes from the word pneuma, P-N-E-U-M-A, like pneumonia, pneuma, P-N-E-U-M-A. That actually means wind, breath, spirit. And fear is translated as delius, which means timidity. Fear comes when we inhale the wrong wind. So notice how panic attacks, anxiety, asthma, notice how it steals your breath, makes it challenging to inhale. So you're like that. It's because the spirit of fear steals the right wind. It steals the correct wind that's supposed to be going in, which is the Lion of Judah who releases the wind, the roar of Judah, the spirit of the living God came as a wind, right? He steals the breath of God and replaces it with a whirlwind. Have you ever had so much wind coming at you that it's hard to breathe? Believe it or not, sometimes it's not the, just the absence of wind. Sometimes it's too much of the whirlwind, the chaos, the confusion that comes along with fear, okay? And it makes it impossible to breathe. The spirit of fear attacks the mind, and it creates those imaginations, right? That either was witnessed or experienced. And the traumatic event, right? It makes you feel helpless. So this is what you believe. This is an example of a root lie. God didn't stop this. So God doesn't love me. I can't trust God with my well being or the well being of those I love. I must watch out for myself and those around me controlling the environment so we are safe. That's the lie. If you recognize yourself in that lie, you have to repent. You have to say, Father God, I repent for coming into agreement with the lie. And then you repeat the lie that, that, that I had to do everything because you can't take care of me, that I can't trust you with the most valuable members of my family or with this situation or with this area of my life because I feel like you've let me down before. You have to forgive after repenting God, believe it or not, for it, and not that God requires forgiveness in that sense, like, oh, God made a mistake. No, it's not that. It's that in order to release the, 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 the indictment that you have on the creator of the universe, 
you have to understand and forgive God for not meeting your expectations. So it's more about releasing yourself from holding God accountable for not doing what you wanted him to do in the way that you wanted him to do it. Does that make sense? That's the root lie of the thing. There's a root lie attached to the trauma. There's always a root lie. That's the root of every trauma is a lie. So the thing that I always have to explain to people is this. It's not that you did anything wrong. If you were abused, it's not your fault that you were abused. It's not my fault that my daughter died. I want you to understand that when we're asked, when we're repenting, we're repenting not for trauma that was done to us. We're repenting for the lie that we believed as a result of the trauma. Do you understand? So, so I have to be clear because sometimes people are like, well, if I forget, I'm not forgiving this person because that's, or I'm not forgiving God because that's like saying that it was okay that he took my kid. No, it's about saying that you believe that God stole your child. God may have allowed it, but God didn't steal it. But what you believed as a result of that is that now you have to be in control of everything because clearly God didn't do a good enough job. See, that's what we have to repent of. It's, it's, it's believing and assigning the character of something to God that doesn't belong. It's the, it's believing something about the Lord, a lie about the Lord. That's not true. That's what we have to repent of. Okay. The spirit of power is the Holy spirit in second Timothy. The love comes from father. God, the sound mind comes when we exercise the word of God, which inhabits the character of God because the word became flesh. That's Jesus. So the spirit of fear makes us react, not respond. And the physiological response is the increased heartbeat, stomach dropping, stomach issues, acid reflux, big one, big one, acid reflux. That also makes you feel like you can't breathe. Acid reflux comes up from here. Again, see how fear will inhabit sometimes the throat area. It can, fear will inhabit a body part. Fear will inhabit a, a room in your body, a, a, a part of your body, like the flesh of your body, the room, and also the mind. So that's what we're going to be casting out. Okay. That's what we're going to be casting out tonight. So here are some of the, the things that I want you to be aware of. This, is a, this was important revelation that the Lord shared to me. He says, Nicole, think of this. You have the helmet of salvation, the armor of Christ, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth. Where does fear manifest? Irritable bowel, the blood, diabetes, also the endocrine system, right? The adrenals, all, all the things that are important are located basically from the waist up. The mind, fear will attack the mind, okay? Okay. And the Bible says, don't be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ. We need the peace of God to guard our heart and mind because fear creates a trauma that allows us to project. The helmet of salvation lets us know that we're saved, yes, but salvation means that we have a deliverer. When the enemy in fear attacks our mind, we believe we have to deliver ourselves and that we have to deliver everybody else around us. That's why the armor of Christ has the head, right? The helmet of salvation to protect the mind, the breastplate of righteousness that covers your kidneys, your adrenals, that covers your endocrine systems right? The pituitary gland and the pituitary is right here. This is all part of what fear attacks. It attacks righteousness, making you feel like you're not good enough, making you feel like you're not righteous enough, like there's some flaw, like there's something wrong with you. And the lie that we believe makes it all fall apart because the belt of truth, the belt of truth is what holds everything up. It's what holds the armor on. So without the belt of truth, we believe a lie. We lose our helmet. We lose it. We lose the protection because we've allowed the spirit of fear to steal it. Not because, you know, of any other reason. 
but because we've allowed, we've come into agreement with a lie, how could the belt of truth hold everything up? You cannot believe the lie and the truth at the same time, right? So this is why the physical aspect gets in there. So we have to overcome the spirit of fear by a few things. First, we have to find the room that fear entered. Sometimes it's a son room or a daughter room, a room like if we're the temple, there's different rooms, right? And one of the books that you're definitely going to want, I love this book. It's The Secrets to Deliverance by Alexander Pagani. I love it. I have a lot of deliverance books over the years. Charles Craft is another good one, but I like, I like how Pagani talks about the rooms and the helmet of, of um, or excuse me, the, um, the rooms that's in our body, that we have different rooms, that we're the temple, there's different rooms. Because I did a, a broadcast on that regarding um, Tobiah and how when Nehemiah found Tobiah in the Holy of Holies, he cast him out of the Holy of Holy rooms. So that's what we're going to be doing tonight, casting things out of the rooms of the various places that fear likes to hide. Okay, this is a great book. Second book for physicality, I mean, you want to talk about this guy's a doctor. A more excellent way. This actually gives you the spiritual root of every single disease. Every single disease. This is an amazing book. So some of the diseases, just to read to you, from fear that other than what I mentioned, happens to do with type A behavior, type A personality oftentimes has a spirit of fear. Ah, he was in one of your dreams. That's awesome, Teresa. That's so cool. Yeah, he's, he's pretty cool. I, I, I came across him recently, actually, um, and just really, just really liked his book. I mean, I think I read it in like three nights. It was fascinating. Just a different take, a different perspective, right? Um, and, and definitely important for your arsenal. Um, and just, I like, I always like to have deliverance books because I like to go through excuse me, deliverance myself. I like to go through to keep it. If I start feeling nervous about something and I know that the spirit of fear is trying to enter back in, I will renounce whatever thought and I'll cast down every vain imagination because that thing tries to come back. It just does. It just does. Um, and in fact, because of this broadcast, there was one night where I was warring all night with the spirit of fear, like literally having a battle because I was not letting it in. I was like, no, we're not doing this. Nope, sorry. I was praying the whole night because why? Because of this, <laughs> because I was coming on tonight for this reason to do this, to educate and to deliver. That's, that was my, that's my thing. And so that's what happens. Now, it doesn't mean that just because you have a thought that something is wrong, it just means that the enemy will try to come back in because that's what he does. And yes, Amy, I too have a tendency to be a type A personality, but I have let a lot of things go give you an example. I used to make lists for everything, lists for every little thing. I had lists and lists. And then whatever I didn't check off on that list made me feel like a failure. The list became an idol because the list was, was, uh, you know, a conduit of my worth. And then, and then I'd be nervous about not getting something done. I mean, that was, I had to get rid of that. The Lord's like no more lists. Now I wake up and say, Lord, what are we doing today? What, what are we doing today? Yes, I'm busy. I have a lot of things going on, but what are we doing today? Tell me what you want me to do today. Let God set your day. That just casts off the spirit of fear. It casts off the control that comes along with fear, right? Other thing, depression is a part of fear, stress, and the physiologically that comes along with it. Insomnia, okay? Fatigue, chronic fatigue, overeating even is fear, right? Stress disorders, okay? being paranoid, irritable bowel syndrome, fibromyalgia, eczema, neurodermatitis, acne, diabetes, all of those things are in this book. Ulcers, big one, right? Nausea, vomiting, reflux, colitis, leaky gut, all fear. So here's, here's why. Take a look at a lot of the autoimmune diseases like Crohn's disease, colitis, all of those. And autoimmune disease is the body attacking itself. The spirit of fear, the spirit of fear is like a spirit of death. Do you ever say, I'm scared to death? The spirit of fear creates autoimmune diseases so the body will attack itself. 
And there's self-rejection that comes along with that as well. Okay. A more excellent way, the author is Dr. Henry Wright. Okay. I'm going to put it up as close as I can, just so you guys can see this. Dr. Henry Wright. He is amazing. Love this book. I've had this book for years um, because I knew that um, I, I, I really believe the Lord is doing um, something different with doctoring and, and the Lord's like, there's going to be more spiritual doctors, like doctors of the Holy spirit that come, you know, um, okay. Inner healing. Every time I visit the pain. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. it, it's happening because Jules, that means it's manifesting. So sometimes when you do inner healing and you, and you visit that thing, you get anxious. So the thing is when you do inner healing and deliverance, um, even on yourself or even with this broadcast, we will say there will be no backlash and that the trauma associated with pain cannot infect you. We have to say that the trauma, and I do this even with myself when I'm praying, because sometimes there's triggers, you know, there's always going to be sometimes a little thing that'll come up and it'll, something will try to enter and I'll say, no, no. Um, you know, when I go through that, I'm like, Lord, I know that you do what's right, that you know best. And I know that, um, that, that your way is the best way. And when you rebuke and cast out the spirit of fear, or you go back and inner healing to a memory, you have to say in the name of Jesus, this memory is sealed in Jesus's blood and authority and the, and the trauma associated with the memory cannot touch me. So you have to do that because otherwise it'll try to enter in again. Right. And the Bible says, peace, I leave with you. My peace, I give unto you, not as the world giveth give I unto you, let your heart not be troubled, nor let it be afraid. So what we have to do is, is remove the impact of the trauma. Okay. And we have to call forth Jesus in that moment when we're trying, when we're remembering something and ask the Lord Jesus, where were you in this moment? And the Lord will show you where he was and he'll redeem the memory. And we're going to go over that tonight as well in the prayer. So does this make sense to you guys that we have to clear our temple, that, that these are some of the physical things, right? Does that make sense? Or is some of this resonating with you? Are you feeling like this is something that you understand? Ah, and that's what it could do. It can create another fear. That's exactly right. Um, and so if this sounds like you and you want freedom, we're going to pray this prayer. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to enter into a time of prayer. I will always want to give you the background because there's a lie that I want you to think about. What lie did I believe? What was the trauma? Even if it was childhood, when was I always afraid as a kid? And if I was, was it because mom was, was it because mom was overprotective or dad was overprotective? So then I became afraid. If that's the case, it's generational. If you're saying to yourself, gosh, well, it, it, I know that it happened when I had a miscarriage or when my daughter died or when something, I, I lost somebody, then you know, okay, it's attached to that trauma. Maybe it was when you were little and there was a, a traumatic event that happened in your life with a teacher. Maybe it was a parent, right? Okay, so now we understand. So we have to understand that when we go through this prayer together, that when we are going to say we rebuke the lie, each of you will have a different lie that you came into agreement with. So when we get to the repentance part, you have to speak the specific lie that you believed and renounce it, okay? And we're going to get to that part. So one is I renounce the lie and, and there might be more that you're going to add. There might be less. But my point is that when you say it, your, your specific thing that you came into agreement with, that's going to be your thing. And you're going to come out of agreement with that because that was the legal right because demons can't enter without a legal right, okay? What, how did... How did Tobiah enter the temple? He entered the temple because the priest let him in. Okay. Demons can't enter you without a legal right. And they get legal rights by us coming into agreement with a the lie. They come in through generational root systems. So these are the things, and through trauma. So these are the top three. So you have to discern which one in, in you is it. Okay. Because each of you has its own, your own story, right? So this is what we're going to do. So let us begin. We're going to be praying in tongues together. If you have a prayer language, then pray in tongues with me. 
as we repeat, the Lord had me write out this prayer. And most likely what I will do is actually attach it to the, um, I will attach it to this broadcast after the live is done. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start praying. We're going to speak into agreement. We're going to shift the atmosphere together. We're going to prepare our hearts by speaking in the spirit together. And then just by starting to pray. Okay. You ready? Here we go. Father, we invite your presence. Oh God. Lord, we invite your Holy Spirit, the seven spirits of God to enter in. Lord, we invite your angels on assignment here. We call forth the angels of heaven to come and to guard the gates, to guard the gates of this broadcast, to guard, to guard the gates, Lord God to seal the broadcast and to seal the healing and deliverance in Jesus's blood and authority. And we speak that now. We say there will be no backlash. We call down the warrior angels right now to dismantle and destroy anything that is not of you. Any plans, plots of Satan, his demons, or his emissaries right now. We declare and decree that where each and every one of these beautiful children of God are, from the land beneath to the roof above, to the borders of their domain, we declare the kingdom rule of the Lord Jesus Christ in these places in every way. We say that the ground that they are on right now is holy ground and the enemy cannot enter. He can only leave. Fire of God fall and burn in the atmosphere any wind that is the whirlwind that is not you. Fire of God blow, fire of God fall. And the Lord just wants me to remind you that some um, aspects of deliverance, what you might be feeling. Sometimes people will sneeze when they're delivered. Sometimes people will cough. Sometimes people will get nauseous. Don't worry. Sometimes people will salivate. Sometimes people will feel like a frog or something is coming out of their throat. It's nothing to be afraid of. It means it's leaving. Okay. So pay attention to that. It don't stop when that happens. Shandorobobobushka. We just pray in the name of Jesus that you would cover that and call the angels of deliverance forward to assist in the deliverance of your people, of your sons and your daughters. Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, 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 we worship you, God. We worship you, Lord. We know that when wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. We know that we're no longer slaves, Lord God. We don't have to be afraid, Lord God, that you have overcome all. You overcome you've overcome you've overcome jesus 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 hallelujah you've prepared a place you've prepared a place setting we could sit lord god we could sit oh god in the presence of our enemies and eat we come into agreement oh god with the holy spirit we come into agreement with the fact that we want to be healed oh god we come into agreement with the deliverer the master deliverer with his strong right arm coming coming for his sons and daughters coming coming to heal to save deliver lord god we believe that we could step on snakes and scorpions and not get harmed. We believe that like Paul, that any snake bite, we shake off into the fire and we will not be harmed. We set this atmosphere of faith, oh God. Now we set this atmosphere of faith, oh God. And we declare that you are the king of kings, that we have no fear because you're here. You're here. You're here. Your presence is here. We welcome you. Glory to God, we welcome you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father God, we invite you now into our temple. We invite you into our temple with its many rooms. And we invite you into the rooms. 
Lord, we give you permission to flip the tables in our temple rooms and uncover the demon of fear in Jesus' name. Spirit of God, Spirit of God, enter into the room of the son and enter into the room of daughter. Enter into the room of childhood. Enter into that room. Enter into that room, oh God, and flip the table. Flip the table. We say in the name of Jesus, we say, use your whip, oh God, to disarm and dismantle fear, sending it into the abyss, along with the associated spirits of perfection, control, unworthiness, arrested development, and shame. Flip that table, oh God. Uncover and cast into the abyss, oh God. We ask that you fill this room that was once sterile of love with your perfect love because we speak the truth that perfect love casts out fear. We ask that you fill this space with the truth of our adoption as sons and daughters into your kingdom and that you are a good father. We break off every lie told to us as a child, whether it be by a teacher, whether it be by a father, a mother, or a sibling, or even bully. I'm hearing the word bully. If you were bullied as a child, I just break off the lies that are associated with it. We break off the lie. We break off the lie, oh God, that was believed. We break off the lie and we repent for coming into agreement with that lie. We break off every word curse in the name of Jesus, gossip and slander by the blood of Christ. We break off every abusive word spoken by mother or father or teacher or sibling or bully in the name of Jesus. Every mocking spirit in the name of Jesus, I say, be gone now. I cast off the voice and break the demonic voice that's on replay over and over again that you hear words that were spoken over you that are not for you. Those were not the truth. That was the lie that they spoke, the lie of a father, the lie of a mother who just didn't do right by you. The lies of bullies, the lies of a sibling who spoke not knowing, who spoke out of their woundedness, not out of the truth. Repent, think, what was the lie? What was the lie in that room that you believed? Now break it. So I renounce that lie in the name of Jesus. I repent for coming into agreement with that lie in the name of Jesus. And say, I ask you, Lord, to fill me with the truth of my identity in you as a royal priesthood, a holy nation, adopted by the king of kings. Yes, also Raquel, aunts and uncles, aunts and uncles, grandparents, any adult who, when you were a child, spoke lies over you, wounded bled over you from their own wounds. That was never meant for you to carry. I break it off you now. And we say that you're a good father. You're a good brother, Lord. You're a good uncle. You're a good lover, oh God. You're a good lover of our souls, oh God. You know. You're a good grandparent. You're a good daddy and you love us. You're a good mother, Jesus, a brother, a sister. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Mm. Spirit of God, I ask that you enter into the room of trauma and flip the table in the name of Jesus.
We call forth your spirit to dismantle and disarm fear, sending it into the abyss, along with the spirits of grief, rejection, abandonment, shame, and the orphan spirit. We ask that you fill this space with the truth that you were there when we experienced the trauma, that you care about us. You were there holding our hand and you kept your promise that you would never leave us or forsake us because you understand what it feels like to feel forsaken and to be forsaken by your father who could not look at you when you became sin. But because you endured that, we don't ever have to. So we break the agreement with the lie. We break the agreement with the lie that we are not loved. We break the agreement with the lie that we are not worthy. We break agreement with the lie that our grief defines us. We break the agreement with the lie that rejection defines us. We break the agreement that opened the door to fear through trauma, through words, through rejection, through shame. You were there, God. You were there through every minute of everything, Lord God. And even though, even though we, we might think, oh, Lord, why did we have to go through it? No answer will change the fact that, that we live in a world where people are broken and they, sometimes they try to break those you love. And your body was broken on the cross so we could have victory. So we proclaim that victory over fear, over grief, rejection, abandonment, shame, all the things that go along with fear of feeling like we don't belong, of feeling like we're the black sheep. I'm hearing black sheep of the family. I'm hearing black sheep of the family. I break that title off of you right now. You are not the black sheep of your family. You are part of a kingdom family. Break that lie off of yourself. Break that lie off of yourself. I also keep hearing a phrase of a lie that was believed, something like, you're no good, you're no good. It sounds like just three words, you're no good, but it's like keeps playing over you. Like, like as if it's like you're a, like something that, that you're, that, that it's like your song or something. Like it's a, you keep hearing that voice. It's like a, a, a movie that keeps replaying in your head. I break that lie off of you in Jesus name. Shandora, when you stand before God, you are the righteousness of Christ. Jesus, 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 Jesus. We break that lie. We break that lie. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Spirit of God, we invite your presence into the room of generations to flip the table and to drive out the spirit of fear along with shame, anxiety, worry, and nervous habits. I'm seeing nail biting. Some of you are like this. That break in the name of Jesus. That's broken over you. That's broken. Nail biters. That's broken. Spirit of the living God, remove all the robbers and thieves within these rooms. We speak the truth that says we are no longer a slave to fear in our generational line. We're instead speak the truth that we're now grafted to the vine and we grow from the nutrients of that vine. We break the lie that says, well, mom was afraid, dad was afraid, so it must be on me too. I break that lie in the name of Jesus. The truth is that you have a different father your father, you have DNA from heaven, your bloodline is from heaven, your umbilical cord is attached. That's right, knuckle popping, broken in the name of Jesus. All of those nervous habits, all of it. I even break off dermatitis or rashes and hives from nervousness. Oh, I keep seeing like somebody gets like, um, like a, a hives and a nervous rash and they itch and itch and itch sometimes even until you bleed. 
And I just break that off of you in the name of Jesus. I even break off blushing and heat, like blushing from the neck. Like when you get embarrassed, I break off embarrassment and the physical manifestations of shame now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask you to go into the room of long-term memories and redeem each one. Flip over the tables and remove each object of fear. Whoa, Jesus, yes. Yes. The Lord right now is removing the object of fear from your memories, even people. He's, he's cleaning it. He's casting it. He's flipping the tables and he's removing it from your long-term memory. We repent, oh God, for setting up idols in these rooms by coming into agreement with the lie of verbal abuse, sexual abuse, spiritual abuse, physical abuse, and the drivenness to meet expectations of a parent in order to receive love. We break off every legal right by asking you, Lord, to forgive us, for we come out of agreement with every lie that allowed fear and its associates to enter into those rooms. And we break the unholy alliance and contract with fear and its associates in every single way. We say fear and associates, we have nothing in common with you. And we renounce rebuke and disown you in every way. Shame, you need to leave. You're not welcome here. We sever all prior contracts and alliances in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask you now, God, Holy Spirit, and Jesus, and Father, to fill that room with your holy peace, your presence, and new memories, new memorial stones of your goodness in our lives. There are some of you that need to break people pleasing. I'm hearing people pleasing. That's fear of man. We need to break people pleasing. There was a, a way that you felt like if you were good or did something that pleased your parents, like in order to receive love, there was a drivenness to perfection. So when people are happy with you, that's people pleasing and, and you need to break that. You, you, you say yes to things that you shouldn't say yes to. You say you allow people in your life that you shouldn't because you want to be loved. And the Lord says no more. It is time to break that. Because the lie that you were believing was that in order to be loved, you have to say yes. That's right. You have to say yes and you have to agree and you have to be status quo. You have to just keep everything evil. You, and the lie that you also believed, the Lord's just adding stuff. I love you, Lord. The lie that you also believed was that your emotions don't matter that you had because other people around you had big feelings that your feelings didn't matter so you learned to stuff them because you feel like nobody really cares about them so you never show them so people say how are you and you say i'm fine praise god but you're not fine the lord wants to break that lie that you have to be perfect that you have to be doing okay that you have to say yes to people that you have to have zero boundaries in order to be loved that's a lie. Break that off. We break that lie in the name of Jesus. We repent for coming into agreement with it. And the truth is that Jesus flipped the tables and so will we. That Jesus set boundaries and so will we. That Jesus only did what he saw his father doing, not what everybody else expected him to do. And the Lord says that there's some of you that need redemption of who I am. 
the Lord said, you need redemption of who Jesus was, meaning Jesus is saying, many of you think I was just the lamb and just let everybody walk all over me. And that's not true. Jesus said, I actually died on the cross because I didn't do what everybody wanted me to. My disciples abandoned me, says the Lord, because they were afraid of death and because they figured there was no hope. They wanted me to be a king on earth. The Lord says the expectations that others put on you, cast them off. They're not God's expectations. And it's idolatry when you treat them as if they are. The Lord says some of you are saying yes to people as if you're saying yes to me without ever asking me about it. Ooh. So you need to repent. We need to repent. We need to repent for coming into agreement with that lie that you have to say yes to spiritual leaders all the time, that you have to say yes to all the things and be all the things in order to be accepted, loved, and to be doing the work of the Lord. Jesus, the Lord saying busyness is not the work of the Lord. It's a distraction. And it comes from the root of fear that you're somehow going to be discovered as an imposter that you're somehow going to be discovered as not being whole. So break that lie for Jesus says, come as you are. He loves you right where you are. So we break that fear of man and we break that people pleasing spirit in the name of the living God. We break the unholy soul ties with spiritual leaders in the name of Jesus that, that don't belong. That, that mm, The Lord is breaking the fear that you have of being ostracized or somehow left out of a click, like a clicky church click. Like as if you have to dress and look and be and act like that click in order to be considered part of something. The Lord wants to break that. You were meant to stand out. You were meant to be different. Mm. So we break that fear of man for it is a snare in the name of Jesus. And we speak the truth. We speak the truth. We speak the truth. We speak the truth. That we only do what we see our father doing in heaven. And what Father God wants us to do. Now, Lord God, we move into the storage room of our temple. And Father, we ask your spirit to throw out the demon of fear that's attempting to now steal provision, inheritance, abundance, and true sacrifice in the name of Jesus. We cast it into the abyss in your name. We remove it and all of its associates and its residues, including, but not limited to shame, inadequacy, humiliation, inferiority, incompetence, rejection, condemnation, criticism, fear of failure, embarrassment, disappointment, disapproval, accusation, judgment, and we throw each and every one out. And we burn it all with the fire of God, with the fire of God, for our body is a living sacrifice. Oh God, burn it away. Burn the residue, oh God. Burn it in the name of Jesus. Burn it. We call the fire of God to burn, burn, burn that which does not belong. And we speak the truth that we are a royal priesthood and a holy nation, that we are adopted sons and daughters of a king, that we are the righteousness of Christ Jesus, that he is our family, that we are accepted, that we are loved, that we are connected to the vine. He is the vine. We get to be the branches. Every good and perfect thing comes from above. And guess what? We were created in the image of God. So we are good and perfect in his eyes. We are the righteousness of God. When he sees us, he sees us. He's not disappointed. He's not shaking his head at us. No. When Father God looks at us, he sees his son. 
Shato robo bo shkata yerra sata raba baba shando robo bo ye. And we speak the truth of that. We speak the truth of that over everyone watching now and later because the anointing will not lift off this broadcast. The strong arm of the Lord is the delivering arm of the Lord. Oh, the strong arm of the Lord is delivering his sons and daughters now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, for deliverance. Thank you, God, for what you're doing. Lord, we call out the Elijahs now. I call forth the Elijahs that are hiding in the cave when they are meant to be contending and not cowering. Come forth, Elijahs, from the cave. At the sound of my voice, I break off every word curse, threat, slander, witchcraft, and gossip intended to create fear and to stall the call on your lives. I break it off you now. We break agreement with it in the name of Jesus, and I call forth the healing over your minds now, the healing over your brain waves. Now, I speak the divine intent and purpose of God over every brain wave, over the alpha wave, your delta wave, your theta wave, your beta wave, your gamma wave, all of them, oh God. We speak complete renewal and peace over those beautiful brain waves, those frequencies. And I call forth the frequency of the Lord into the frequency of the physical body of each and every one watching over the soul body of the soul portion of the body, over the spirit portion, the frequency of heaven, the sound of heaven to come down and to make the other frequencies come into alignment in the name of Jesus. I break off confusion and chaos off of those brain waves. Fog, go, fatigue, leave. And I speak the divine processing of emotions over you rather than residual buildup of ignored feelings. I call forth the divine presence of God to sever the connection of long-term memories with objects of fear and stressors and triggers. And I speak the replacement of it with new divine connections from God, a new tribe, a new family. Jesus, Jesus, oh yes, we speak your divine intent and purpose over each person watching now or later, their biology, at the sound of my voice, cellular levels, chemical levels, I speak your divine intent and purpose over your spirit, over your soul and your flesh. I speak the divine intent and purposes of God over the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system, your immune system, your limbic system, and your hypothalamus, your pituitary glands, your pineal glands, your parathyroid glands, your thyroid glands, your thymus glands, adrenal glands, your pancreas, ovaries, and testes. I call forth the divine intent and purpose of God over your hormone levels, autonomic nervous system, neurological and endocrine systems, and I cast out the spirit of fear hiding in these systems, and particularly in the stomach, the intestines, the esophagus, and throat. Also over the skin, eczema, psoriasis, contact dermatitis, allergies, food allergies, environmental allergies, thank you, Jesus. We cast out the spirit of fear manifesting as fibromyalgia, manifesting as hypothyroidism. We speak peace to every single one of the body functions. The peace of Christ that surpasses all understanding, we call forth in these places in every way. And we declare and decree that you, O oh God, will keep us in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you because we trust you. And we repent, O oh God, for, for not trusting you. We repent for believing the lie that we can't trust you with the things that are the most precious to us. We repent of that lie. We renounce it. 
We repudiate it in the name of Jesus. And we come into agreement with the truth that you are trustworthy, that you will never leave us, that you will never forsake us, that you were always there, that you care about our flesh, that you care about what ails us, oh God. Mm. And Lord, we also repent for coming into agreement with illness. We repent for coming into agreement that our illness somehow purify us purifies us and that we're like Paul with the thorn. We, we've taken something, oh God, that you've wanted to cast out and we've used one example and we've made it an excuse to stay sick. Mm, forgive us, oh God. Forgive us for making it seem like holy persecution when it was a demon that needed to be cast out. Forgive us for coming to agreement with sickness and for making it something holy. When it's not, we repent of that, oh God. We repent of it. We repent for making sickness our identity in the name of Jesus, for making infirmity an identity. And we break that off by the fire of God, by the blood of Christ. And we say that we are identified as a son and a daughter that we are identified not by our sicknesses and not by our sufferings, but by who you are, by what, by what you said, Lord God, that we would even do greater things. We are victorious and we proclaim that truth, that we are victorious because of what you did and because of who lives in us, that he who is in us is greater than he who is in the world. And that includes sicknesses, that includes fear, that includes any associated demonic entities. We speak that truth. Lord, we call forth the warrior angels to dismantle every enemy that tries to breach the gate and walls of our temple. We call forth the guardian angels to guard the temple and the seven spirits of the Holy Spirit to inhabit each room of our temple. We put on the armor of Christ, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, and the belt of truth. And we put on our shoes of peace, which is the gospel. We carry our sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And to cut down every lie of the enemy and the shields of faith to extinguish the fiery darts of the enemy. And we activate it with your prayer, O oh God, in the name of the living God. Jesus, 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 we call forth the renewing of the mind, oh God. We call forth the renewing of the mind, new thought patterns, new neurological patterns in the name of Jesus, new processes, new neural pathways in the name of Jesus to process feelings, oh God. Lord, increase our hunger and thirst for you. Put in us a new fire and a new desire. Jesus. There are many rooms, there are many rooms. Go, I prepared a place for you. Go, I prepared a place for you. I've prepared a place for you, says God. I've prepared a place for you. I've prepared a place for you. I've prepared a place for you, says God, says the living God. Oh, show us, Jesus. Show us the place, oh God. I've prepared a place for you. I've prepared a place for you. In my house, there are many rooms. In the mansions, there are many rooms. And I've gone before, and I've gone before. You're not homeless. You're not homeless. You're not lost, and you're not an orphan. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. 
I've prepared a place for you. I've prepared a place for you. Oh, 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 you've prepared a place. You've prepared a space for us to go. You've prepared a space for us to go. You've cleaned our rooms. You've cleansed our temple, God. You've cleansed our temple, God. You are deliverer. You are deliverer. The strong right arm swept the enemy from our temple. The strong right arm of God has swept the enemy from the temple, from the temple, Jesus. Every idol has been cast down. Every crown has been thrown on the ground. For you are God alone. We worship you with groans and songs of deliverance. With songs of deliverance. For our stance is victorious. For our stance is victory, and we're seated in heavenly places, spaces. Amen. Amen. Open our eyes to see, open our eyes to see that with shoes of peace we walk in victory. With shoes of peace we walk in victory. We're going from sword to scepter. We're going, we're going, we're going from sword to scepter. It's our deliverance, Jesus. <laughs> Woo. We're seated in heavenly places as your spirit enters rooms and spaces, removing cobwebs and letting the light shine. So let your light shine, oh Father. Let your light shine, oh God. Let your light shine for the battle's been won. For the battle's been won. The battle belongs to the Lord and his strong right arm. It carries the sword and he slays all the enemies. And now believe that you've been set free, set free. Believe that you've been set free, set free. Believe that you've been set free, set free. Fill us, Father, with your life. Fill us, Father, with your light. Your dunamis power won the fight. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Jesus. Let the winds of glory flow. Let the winds of glory flow and sow in the soil of our hearts and our spirit, man. You have a plan, even when we don't see it. I don't need to see it to believe it. You are God. You are God. Open my spiritual eyes and ears to see and hear you and hear you from heaven jesus hallelujah 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 roshan desaye hallelujah Hallelujah. Take us deeper. Take us deeper. Take us deeper than our feet could wander. Take us deeper. Take us deeper, 
take us deeper than our feet could ever wander than our feet could ever wander you're the god of deliverance you're the god of deliverance in your blood and your blood and your blood it flows over us and it runs through our veins we can never be the same for our sons and daughters oh our sons and daughters of a king deliverance is the song we sing oh jesus Oshuru sunda ye sande oh oh God you are renewing our hearts and the frequency is aligning as you are designing in your intricate nature within us and you're sowing and you're sowing and you're moving and you're shifting as you're lifting in the atmosphere we saw fear leave <laughs> and it took all of his little friends bye bye in the name of jesus bye bye we see you go and now we know we're victory in christ jesus wave your sword around say thank you lord you're the deliverer of the nations but you care enough to deliver sons and daughters sons and daughters it's just the order of things father it's just the order of your goodness it's the frequency of your goodness it's the sound of deliverance it's the sound of deliverance jesus 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 let your joy fall on us. Let your joy surround us. Jesus. Glory falling off the last. Let your glory fall on us. Fill us with your wind. Fill us with your holy wind, with your holy breath. Let your holy breath overcome us. Let it replace what has left us. Let the oxygen of heaven flow in our bodies. You are the king. You give us songs to sing. You are worthy, worthy, worthy. You are worthy. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain, the deliverer who took all our pain. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Spirit of the Living God. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. Oh, 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 oh. Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Roboboshita. Shandai. Soto robo shande sai Ushando sande Oh, you are worthy You are worthy Peace. Father, impart your peace and your glory over them. 
Let the weight of your glory fall. Let the peace of heaven reign and fall. The atmosphere has changed where you are. It's changed. It's the Father's lullaby over you. It's the Father's lullaby over you. Jesus. Oh, Praise be to God. Let it fall. Shator Bobo Shata Sandirasi Urubu Shandarasi Rasi Shor Bobo Seal this in worship. Seal this deliverance in worship. More healing. I impart dreams and visions from the throne room of God over you. Mm. I call forth the voice of the Father that you would hear his voice over you now. The voice of the Spirit of the living God, Holy Spirit, as the mother over you. Jesus as the brother over you, walking alongside you that you would feel his presence wherever you go and whatever you do, he is with you. Wherever you go, Whatever you do, he loves you, and nothing can separate you from the Father, from the love that the Father has from you. The Lord loves you. No life, no death can separate you from the love of the Father. A father withholds no good thing from his child. That's you. You're his child. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Continue to heal, oh God. Continue to move. This is not the end. This is just the beginning of healing. Lord, I call forth the ministering angels that even as they sleep, you would minister to them in their sleep, in their dreams, that deliverance and any more deliverance that must take place, let it take place in their dreams. We seal their dreams in Jesus' blood and authority their thoughts and Jesus' blood and authority, their words and self-talk, redeem the mouth in Jesus' blood and authority. Take the coal, burn our lips and purify it, oh God, that we may speak only things that edify you, for we are made in your image. We have the DNA of Christ within us. I call forth any breathing issues or diseases or symptoms of COVID or anything in the name of Jesus that is attempting to steal your breath. And I cast it out now in Jesus' name. Fire of God, burn disease. Fire of God, burn COVID or after effects of COVID in the name of Jesus. I call forth appetites to return. I call forth breathing to take place. And I say, release your hold in the name of Jesus now. And I call forth the divine intent and purpose over, the, over each and every person watching over their lungs. God's divine intent and purpose over your lungs, over your oxygen flow over your bloodstream, your blood, the oxygen in your blood, your blood oxygen. That's what I'm hearing. I don't know what it means. I'm not a doctor, but I know that that's what God is telling me to call for right now over you in Jesus's name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Mm. I call forth healing over tinnitus in Jesus name. I call forth the ringing of the ears to be removed now and replaced by the voice of the father. 
Shatoro bobo shatasaye. I say ring of the ears, stop. Align with the frequency of heaven only. Shandoro bobo shatasandeira vashkoro boboshka. Bonnie, I'm so sorry to hear that. I didn't realize that, that you were diagnosed with COVID. So praise God. See, God sees, God knows. And I saw your face too when I was praying that. Um, but I wasn't about to call you out, but you just you just said that you were diagnosed with it just now. So praise God. That's a that's a testimony. Guys, let this increase your faith. God's healing people. And just to increase your faith, um, there was a, a group of women that I prayed with. I called forth the breath over somebody who was on a ventilator um, from COVID and they left the hospital the next day. So I'm just letting you know that God is a miracle working God. And the fear associated with COVID, I break. I break that off. The fear associated with COVID and the flu and disease, I break off. Mary Jo, you have a broken wrist. I call forth the fire of God right now over that wrist. That wrist, I declare and decree healing. I call forth the bones to fuse together properly now over Mary Jo. I call forth the divine intent and purpose of the Lord over that broken wrist now that didn't heal properly, I say you will align yourself with the divine DNA and purpose of Christ for that wrist that, but that you would be able to move it, Mary Jo, that you would be able to move it in the name of Jesus, that it would look divine and normal, that it would function properly in appearance and in function. I call forth the fire of God to remove pain associated with it. And if you're dry Dropping things because of it. I call forth the fingers and the nerve endings attached to the wrist and the nerve endings to that are attached to also align properly and the muscles and the sinews around it, around the joint, around the wrist and the bone to be able to function properly as a unit, as one in the name of Jesus. Oroboboshka. And any ringing of the ears in the name of Jesus, I call out by the blood of the living God. While we're at it, who else needs prayer? Let's continue on. Just because it's a spirit of fear broadcast does not mean we can't pray over physical needs. We can pray over physical needs. And also, Bonnie, to encourage you, ringing in ears. I want to say that sometimes I will hear a high-pitched sound, and it took me a long time to understand that I was hearing angels. Whenever angels are near, I will hear a high-pitched sound. Sometimes I go like this, and when I look around, I say, Lord, what is it? And I sense an angel walk, my sense angels. So sometimes what we are hearing is a frequency and yes, I understand tinnitus and ringing, but sometimes we are, we, we experience the kingdom of heaven with all of our five senses. So there's something with that. So, so just see what it is. Ask the Lord if it's something that is that, or if it's high pitched. Okay. So just cause there's a difference. So I want to just let you know that to encourage you, the eyes, I call forth healing in the eyes right now. Cataracts, I say, be gone. Um, I'm seeing like in the eyes, like any um, bubbles or, or, or air pockets or something that happens behind the eye. I don't know the technical term, but it can weaken the eye muscle. So I call for the strengthening of the eyes, the strength of the muscles of the eyes. I call for the healing and the muscles of the eyes to function properly. I call forth the sight to be healed, that anything impeding sight like cataracts or, or some sort of neuropathy or, or some sort of um, weakness in the eye muscle, I call the fire of God on the eye to burn that which does not belong. And I call forth the healing balm of Gilead over the eye. And in fact, we, in a spirit of faith, oh God, spit and we put it on the eyes right now in the name of Jesus, and we do it again in faith, and we put it on the eyes in the name of Jesus and say, see clear, so eye muscles strengthen in the name of God, in the name of the living God.
be healed in Jesus' name. Floaters we call out in the name of Jesus. We call out any floaters or eyes, myopia, all of that. We say no more. That the only thing that these eyes will see is the spirit of the living God. That they are, you are seated in heavenly places and you will see things like an eagle. You will see things all. You won't be seeing things on the side of your eye. I call forth the removing of all floaters in the name of Jesus. I call out neuropathy in feet and hands. I say nerve endings align yourself with the frequency of heaven. I call forth the divine intent and purpose of God over the, over the nerve endings in my people here, oh God. The nerve endings, oh God. I call forth healing in the nerve endings and we cut the root in the name of Jesus, the root of any fear or anything from neuropathy. Mm. I call forth healing for any pre-diabetic people. If you are pre-diabetic, I call out to the spirit of fear again and I say, get out and you are healed in Jesus's name. Mm, there's fire on that one. Mm. What else? I'm scrolling down, guys. Pain, temple, lesions, pain, burning on the tongue, floaters, and blurred vision. I'm hearing, uh, Anna Marie, I'm hearing um, that, that there's something, are you, di are you pre-diabetic or diabetic? Is there something there? I could just keep hearing that regarding your symptoms. I just keep hearing that. And if that's the case, I pray against that in the name of Jesus. I call the regulation of sugar and any type two diabetic in name of Jesus. I call forth the healing of God. I call forth the healing of God in the endocrine system, the spirit of the living God to invade the endocrine system and to regulate sugars, to regulate the way the liver processes. I'm hearing liver processing in the name of Jesus. We call forth the ministering angels to go and to minister, Lord God, to go and minister to each and every person now and later to receive this healing in the name of Jesus. Jesus, 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 Oh, shatayera, shandor, robobushka, robobushka. Oh, all right. So I'm calling forth proprioceptive alignments. To, you've had serious falls. So I call forth, um, I'm, I'm hearing... I'm hearing a strengthening in your skeletal system, Mary Jo, that the Lord wants to heal the skeletal system. So I call forth healing right now in the skeletal system. I call forth the divine alignment of the Lord Jesus in those areas in every way. The divine intent and purposes over every bone. I say straighten up, strengthen up in the name of Jesus. For we walk in shoes of peace. We walk straight. Oh God, you order our steps. I call forth the power of God to make sure that every person that has difficulty with their knees, with their spine, back problems, curvature, scoliosis, the skeletal system. I call forth the blood of Christ over each and every part of the skeletal system in the name of Jesus. I'm also hearing that there are some that need um, to forgive. There's a, a bitter, there's a bitter root that's there. And the bitter root, I keep hearing the Lord say, a bitter root gnarls the bones. So if there's any unforgiveness or like a feud, like a, um, 
a feud, like you're not talking to somebody and, and I'm not saying that you should talk to the person, but what I'm saying is if there's something, someone that you need to release that hurts you, that's creating a bitter root, it can, I hear bitterness in the bones. If there's bitterness in the bones and if that's you, then repent for bitterness in the name of Jesus. Say, Lord, I repent for being bitter. I repent for any unforgiveness. I repent and I release them to you in your hands, oh God. And now strengthen my bones, oh God. Strengthen my bones, oh God. Strengthen my bones and put the coal the coal to my lips so that anything that I speak in the name of Jesus would be spoken in purity, that I would not slander anybody in anger, that only honey would come out. Let the fire of God burn away the residue in the name of Jesus. Father, I call forth the power of the living God to burn away the residue of grief. There are some that are carrying the burden of grief and the burden of grief is creating back pain. There's a burden that you're carrying and it's like creating a hunched shoulder. I see like, like a rolled shoulder and a hunched neck and it's hard to stand up straight and you hear all the cricks and and, and, and there's a, spirit, a residue of grief over you. I just blow it away in the name of Jesus, because you say in your word that you take our ashes and you make beauty. So blow the residue off of grief, blow the residue off of pain, oh God, of, of experiences, Father, and replace it, oh God, with beauty. The balm of the joy of the Lord, which is our strength, I call forth joy in the bones. I call forth joy in the bones in the name of Jesus. I call forth protection over children. Yes, I see you. I see you, Tawana. I call forth protection over Tawana's children, over everybody's children, in fact. And I cast off, again, the spirit of fear over as a result of the loss of ch a child in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I call forth the Holy Spirit to help each person process through their, their deliverance. In the name of Jesus. Kidneys have to do also um, urinary tract infections, bladder infections um, also are related to kidneys, Raquel. And so that has definitely been covered. I call for the proper filtration system. I'm hearing the word filtration. So I call for the proper filtration of the, the kidneys. I'm hearing that sometimes it's difficult to filter out what comes out. And the Lord is giving a new filtration system for the tongue. And as a result of the new filtration system and the new way, Raquel, that you're going to communicate, there's a new communication, uh, Raquel, that God's going to give you. Um, it's a new way to speak um, to those who are difficult and who are frustrating you. Um, and, and that as that happens, I see that there's going to be healing in all the physical filtration systems of the body, both in you and the, and the person that you, you might struggle with. There's going to be healing there in that relationship. I could see it in the name of Jesus. Lord, we redeem the tongue in the name of Jesus. We redeem the tongue. We call forth the angels who picked up the tongue and to put the tongue on our lips, to put the hot coal on our lips and our tongue to burn away that which is against you, Lord God. So our lips would be clean because it is an entry point and an, and an exit point. And so God, we just, we just remove any demonic attachments to the tongue right now in the name of Jesus. We remove any demonic attachments to the tongue, to the tongue. And the lips in the name of Jesus. We cast it out. We repent for coming into agreement with it, oh God, with rage and anger and slander. Shato and gossip. And even word cursing other people. The spirit of anger and rage, of bitterness, 
We cast you out of the tongue and the lips in the name of Jesus. And we eat the scroll of honey, oh God, your word. And we say, let it be your word on our tongue. And thank you, oh God, for redeeming our body parts for you. Redeeming what you made, for we are made in your image. And I call forth the divine intent and purpose over their image, because they are made in your image. And I call that alignment of the image of the Godhead that we have been created in. And we align ourselves to that, oh God, to you, your purpose and intent for our bodies, your purpose and intent for our hearts. For we were not meant to live in anger and fear, bitterness or control. We were not meant to manipulate. It's witchcraft. We were not meant to do that. So that's why we come to you. We come to you in repentance to rid ourselves of these things and to invite your Holy Spirit and the seven spirits of God to rest on us, in us, through us, over us. Let it go before us. Let it be behind us and all around us in Jesus' name. Jesus. Wow. 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 Jesus, 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 Jesus. Mm. Healing, oh God. Healing, oh God. Acid reflux, once again. We call forth the divine intent of the stomach producing the proper amount of acid and regulation of the stomach acid, in the name of Jesus. 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 Ooh. Wow, Lord, wow. Now, there may be some things that you're feeling right now. There may be tingling, right? You may feel hot. That's the fire of God. Some will feel a wind. That's the wind of God. Some will feel heavy. That's the glory of God. And it's not an oppressive heavy. It's the weight of his glory on you. That's what you're feeling. Um, this happened in the broadcast um, that I did on Tuesday night. The women in that broadcast, it was for my leadership academy, specifically for women. This is for men and women, but the leadership academy is for women. And I felt they were like, oh my goodness, the glory, the glory, the glory is so weighty. So you will experience that. Okay. And Raquel, I want to encourage you that I know you are against the, the vaccine and things like that. There might be forgiveness um, that you have to release to them. Because I know that it's hard sometimes when we are in a family that does things that we disagree with and that goes against our belief systems but we have to release them to the Lord because if we carry them, it becomes a burden. Some of the things that you guys will carry the burden, the heaviness that you feel is because you've picked it up when you have to leave it on the cross, you have to leave it at the cross. And if you, if you pick it up, then you're carrying something that you're not supposed to carry. Right? So I want to encourage you guys. We have to release our children. We have to release our children to God. We have to release their actions to God. We have to release their care to God when they're little. We have to raise them in the way that they should go. But it's very hard when they get older and they start to make decisions and it's very frustrating. And we can become very disillusioned and angry because, you know, we have to understand that God loved us enough to give us free will. And so then we get upset and you know, just like God gets, you know, frustrated sometimes or maybe not frustrated, but sad when we, you know, do things that we're not supposed to do. And he's like, just come back. Just come back. I love you. Just come back. We, we want to have that same position of the prodigal where we love people through things. We don't have to agree with them, but we can still love them. Right. And we can we have to somehow for, forgive them for making decisions that break our hearts because we love them because they're our children. So we have to release them. We have to release our spouses. We have to release, you know, we can't be the, the everything to our spouses. We can't set up idolatry 
in our hearts. We can't, we were never meant to be everything to our spouse. We were never meant, our children were never meant to fill a void in us. Only God can fill that. Our spouse was never meant to fill a void in us. Only God can do that. So we have to, if we want to be healthy emotionally and physically and spiritually, we have to release that which is not ours, right? We have to, and that's the hardest thing to do. That's the hardest thing to do as parents, as, as fathers, as daughters, right? That's the hardest thing, but we have to. So praise God. Um, just know that the Lord knows who you are. The Lord knows what ails you and he will heal you. He, he has done it. It has already taken place. Believe it, receive it. This isn't a name it and claim it. There are instant miracles and then there are incremental healings. And one is not better than the other. I happen to be somebody who has experienced incremental healing. Okay. Some of you will experience immediate healing because that's happened too. Like when I've prayed for people and boom, something goes. So it's, it's, you know, so it's important. What I want to tell you to do and ask you to do, if you would, is to write down anything that you're sensing during, during the prayer, during the broadcast, what were you feeling sensing you can private message me i ended up getting a lot of private testimony messages which was awesome some people just didn't feel comfortable posting it publicly that's okay um i love if you would but if not you can private message me um and just let me know what if there is what you experienced um there's sensations there's things that will happen but sometimes you'll yawn and, and I've experienced people just yawning during deliverance, sneezing or coughing or experiencing. There's things that happen. That's right. Burping a lot and yawning. That's deliverance. That's evidence of being delivered. Okay. Now, here's what I also want to tell you about. This is very important. And it's this. You have to understand that we have to keep the door closed to those open spaces right? So, so we don't want to, we have to fill the space with the truth of God. So if something tries to come back in, you just say, nope, I cast down vain imaginations. This is what I do with fear. In the name of Jesus, I cast down vain imaginations. And I honestly see that thing go. Like I felt when I started to fall asleep the other night that something was attacking me. And I felt something sit, try to sit on the bed. And I was like, oh, no, I don't think so. We're not doing this. Get out in the name of Jesus. Bye-bye. So sometimes you're going to war a little longer. Maybe not. But the point is that you have to pray. Prayer is the most powerful weapon. Cast out vain imaginations. If, like, if there's pain, boom. Say, no, I don't think so. Pain, leave. Infirmity, get out. No, you're not welcome here. I've been healed. Boom. It goes. I'm telling you, it goes. I had a muscle spasm so bad last week that I was like, I just fell to the ground because of the pain. I was like, oh. and my, and my husband's like, what, Nicole, what's going on? What's going on? I was like, oh. and I was like, get out now in the name of Jesus. And boom, phew, gone, gone. Just sometimes something will come at you and you just have to say, I don't think so. God did it. And it was gone. I mean, gone, no muscle cream, no nothing. So my pleasure, Lisa, this is, believe it or not, a joy to do for you guys. The only thing I ask of you is to share the broadcast if you have it, because if you needed this, imagine everybody else who needed it, right? Everybody else who needs healing like this, who needs deliverance like this. And so I wanted to give you guys a lot of time. What you'll notice is underneath, if you feel led to sow into the ministry, we're a 501c3. We are official as of a couple of months ago. I'm so happy it took with COVID months and months and months and months and months, almost a year to get our 501c3. Um, but we are a full-on nonprofit 501c3 recognized. Um, so any donations, um, that you make will be you they, they're tax exempt like you can write them off so I want to encourage you I put the links the soul links in there if you feel led to support the ministry and to support 
um, the cost of running the ministry and so on and so forth. So praise God for that. I'm so excited about what God is doing. He's just, he's so faithful. He loves you. He knows who you are. Um, he wants you free. I want you free. I'm just loving taking back people. Um, it's like, this is, uh, there's nothing better than loving on God's people. There's nothing better than equipping the church, equipping the saints, healing the saints, loving on the saints, equipping them to equip others. It's just, it's beautiful in every way. Um, and so it doesn't even feel like two and a half hours went by um, because that's the spirit of the Lord. So praise God, you hung in there <laughs> and you fought for that healing and you got it. And so I love you ladies. And I love you gentlemen. I love you, um, your children. And I bless you. I declare and decree and seal this broadcast and your healings and Jesus's blood and authority. And I bless you. I bless your family. I bless your children's children's children. And I declare and decree that they will be fire crackers and fire brands for the Lord. And now go and do the same. That which has been done for you, now go and do the same. You've learned something. Now, if you know somebody struggling with fear, give them the freedom. Give them the victory in Christ Jesus. Send them the broadcast. Share this on your wall. Let's set people free together. Let's be the church. Let's do what Jesus did. Let's do greater things than Jesus did. It's biblical. All right. I love you guys. And I will see you very soon. God bless you.